Hi, hello, welcome back to another Jamie video. Today, I wanted to talk about a YouTuber that I'm sure everyone in the self-improvement space has heard of, and that is Hamza, and particularly why I think as women, we should take his advice for self-improvement with a pinch of salt. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Hamza. I was on self-improvement for a while before I came into contact with him, but starting to watch his videos is what really kick-started kind of this whole channel, taking it more seriously, being a lot more disciplined in what I do. And for that reason, I have a lot of respect, a lot of gratitude and a lot of admiration towards Hamza, especially as a YouTuber, because what he has managed to do in unifying this whole community is really, really unprecedented. Okay, some may argue that Andrew Kate did something similar, but I think their influences on young men have been very different. <laughs> and you can definitely tell the difference in their message. I think Andrew Tate is meant to be a little bit more abrasive, a little bit more inflammatory. Fair enough, that's his goal. He wants to be as famous as possible. Whereas I admire Hamza a little bit more for his journey from degeneracy to kind of godliness, to business, to all these masculine pursuits. But my point is that as women, we don't really have a female counterpart because well, it's difficult to really concretely say why. I think because YouTube is such a business-based and achievements-based and money-based platform, it's hard to not be sort of masculine, goal-driven and sort of in the hustle grind set when you're a YouTuber. I think in order to be a self-improvement YouTuber or any YouTuber at all, you need to have that kind of masculine, goal-driven, logical aspect to yourself which a lot of us i think when we start to come more into our femininity we lose that kind of passion and drive but that's not to say that we lose discipline i think our feminine version of discipline just looks a lot different to the male one and i've spoken about this a lot in previous videos and that is the fact that men and women are quite honestly very biologically different in the way that our hormones work and we like to think of ourselves as humans right as completely divorced from hormone driven behaviors right but for example when we see animals having sexual instincts we say oh they're hormone driven their their hormones kind of determine what they do but we prefer to think of ourselves as having a bit more freedom as being sort of detached from these hormonal impulses but at the same time, <laughs> women often say things like, oh, I'm so hormonal, like I was so cranky last week, or at that time in your 20s when you get a little bit more broody, <laughs> you start to love babies a lot more. All of these are behaviors that are really, really driven by hormones. But between men and women, it goes a lot, lot deeper than that, in that both men and women have testosterone, right? Men's testosterone, which is their primary sexual hormone, rises and falls on a 24-hour cycle, right? So while they sleep, it's really low. During the daytime, it rises, and you can kind of optimize your day according to how high your testosterone levels are, right? More or less. I'm, I'm oversimplifying it because it's very, because hormones are a very complicated issue and super biological, and I'm not a super scientific person. I only really know the basics, but the difference is that with women, our hormones, for example, progesterone, estrogen, follicle stimulating hormone, and testosterone, but a very, very small amount of testosterone, they all rise and fall over a 28 day period, each at different times. And each of these hormones has a slightly different effect on our behavior, on our social capabilities, on our creative tendencies, on our mood, on so many different things, right? But the way that the world is set up and the way it always has been the way it probably never will change or cease to be is that pretty much every day is the same right maybe you get the weekend off but more or less you have a nine to five you work every day you work according to the masculine hormonal cycle and that every day is the same you have a routine right and this is what women when we tend to start self-improvement this is what i think we do, right? We see the men going like, I wake up every day at 5 a.m. and then I train my body and I'm so disciplined, right? And we think to ourselves, cool, like, I love that. I want to be really disciplined. 
and then you do it. Maybe for a week, you're really happy. Maybe that's in your ovulatory cycle where you're kind of at your strongest, at your peak, your testosterone's at its highest, right? But then eventually you something slips and then you slow down and then during your period you're like oh my god like i can't do this this isn't right for me and then you kind of change month to month right you have these periods of being super into self-improvement and then during your period maybe you want to kind of hide a little bit more or sort of say stay a bit more grounded you don't have the energy you don't have the capabilities quite honestly to go out and run in the rain in the mud or to do all these really heavy disciplined tasks right and i'm not saying that women can't be disciplined i think absolutely when you look at female athletes and high female achievers they absolutely can what i'm saying is they do that in spite of their hormonal cycle rather than with it <laughs> In order to emulate that kind of goal-driven success and discipline and hard work, I think we really have to enter out of our femininity and into more of a masculine headspace. But I don't think that this is optimal, right? I don't think this is the best thing for women. I think so much of the world requires us to be super masculine or rather to operate in a masculine headspace and to be like men, right? When quite honestly, we will never be like men completely, right? There are always biological differences between us. You can't deny that fact. Okay, maybe there's some leeway, maybe, but on the whole, men and women are not the same, right? This is pretty obvious. And so we can't be taking the same approach to self-improvement, to self-development, to discipline as men, right? We quite honestly, it's not even that one is better and one is worse, they're just different. And you can wish it away. Maybe you have the most iron willpower in the world, but inside, I believe that there will still be kind of a natural calling towards the feminine cycle. Activities that kind of keep us grounded and present and in the flow might not necessarily help men in the same way. Like, for example, my stepmother, she does yoga every day and she's very healthy. She's super fit. She's super into fitness and that kind of thing. And she tried to get my dad onto yoga and he hated it he was like it's too girly like funnily enough actually yoga or rather hatha yoga was created as a way for spiritual men or future spiritual leaders in india i think to relieve themselves of their sexual energy without using women right it's a way for you to release your bodily energy but because it fits so well with kind of the female or the feminine aspects of being present of flowing of that sort of thing we kind of adopted it and made it kind of girly when i think actually yoga can be good for both men and women it really depends on how you approach it and sort of your mindset around it because there is a feminine way to do it and a masculine way to do it but that's a whole other video idea but my point is that if you continue to try and be as masculine as possible and to do things the hands away and to have the hustle grind set, you are going to end up burnt out, <laughs> frustrated with yourself, honestly, and depressed. And honestly, further away from your feminine capabilities than ever before. Because in doing so, you deny yourself the freedom and the comfort of listening to your body, of listening to what is best for you as a feminine being maybe you don't always feel feminine fair enough i didn't either i used to think that i was like non-binary because i had no connection at all to the feminine aspects of myself i just wanted to push them away because i was so afraid of what it meant to be a girl i thought that that meant i would be a victim that people would look at me in an objectifying way that i wouldn't be taken seriously and it isn't until I started to isolate myself from the parts of society that were telling me that being a girl means being weak. Being a girl means you have to like pink and be super girly and super feminine. And on one hand, it's funny because I've become super outwardly feminine since then. But on the other, back then i wasn't ready to accept what that meant and i wasn't coming at it from a point of authenticity i was coming at it more from a point of rejecting kind of what i wasn't ready to accept within myself 
a lot of us feel discord with our gender during puberty and I think that's quite a universal experience. I mean, okay, I was thinking about this, right? I went to Brandy Melville the other day, <laughs> which is a popular, very girly girls clothes store chain in the UK, right? And I went in there and it was, they have this thing, right? Where they only hire really, really skinny, really pretty girls, um, like 14 to 18 years old as the store clerks. And then all the girls shopping were like, we're gangly, we're awkward, we're in there, like awkward puberty years and they were trying to fit themselves into these like really pretty, really dainty feminine clothing and I, so, I felt so much for these girls because that used to be me too. I tried to like fit into these clothes and into this persona that I wasn't ready to accept and that's what I thought femininity was, you know, feeling fat in a brandy melville changing room when femininity is so much more than that and so different from that and I don't know I really felt for these girls <laughs> and I was thinking about it for a long time even though their clothes are cute <laughs> I think the store's culture is very telling of what it means to be coming of age as a girl into a woman you know and feeling this the discord between girlhood and womanhood that's a tangent and I'm sort of thinking out loud but anyways if you're on self-improvement um, and you're a girl, please consider joining my Discord channel. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce you guys to Sacred Sisterhood, which is my new Discord channel, which um, I've long been wanting to make a community for women because it's so, so difficult to find women who are into femininity, who want to embrace their femininity, who want to improve themselves, who want to feel present, to feel flowing, to reject all these degenerate things like social media, porn, video games, all the things that can really plague us and to just come together into a sacred higher version of femininity. But I created this community as a way for us all to meet, to connect, preferably it would be girls, I'm aware that I have quite a few male followers as well and while I'm not banning you guys from joining, I will warn you that this is like a feminine space and ideally I'll have to, I'll set up some kind of verification thing. I don't know how that kind of stuff works. I might need to get someone to help me with that, but I would like to verify whether you're a guy or a girl and maybe have separate spaces. I don't know, but I want there to be a sacred space only for women if possible, because it is a femininity channel and I want to create more feminine friendships. I want more sacred femininity in my life. I'm lonely, guys. I want to know more people, more women. But yeah, that's all I really have to say for today. God bless and goodbye.